Hello YouTube, XTT here. This video is about delivery, a 20 point machine on Hectobox created by IPSEC. For user, we will bypass email verification on a local MetaMost instance by opening a help desk ticket and using its temporary email address to register. For root, we will use SUCrack to brute force the root password based on a hint. So after the initial port scan, we have port 80 and port 8065 and we're gonna have a look at them. So here on port 80, we have the delivery site, which is basically a static website. Um, but what's interesting is that we have a link here, which leads to helpdesk.delivery.htb. So let's add that one to our um, pub options. And here we have this um, support um, help desk ticketing system, and we can basically create tickets and check a ticket's status. So let's create one. When we create this ticket, we get a ticket ID, um, but also we get this email address. And if we email something to this address, it will be added to the ticket. So let's look at how this looks in the ticket status menu. Here we got um, our details and basically this thread that whenever this email address is uh, mailed to, we would see this in this thread here. Okay, so let's look at the other port right now. And here we have this MetaMost um, installation and it allows us to create an account. So we can try that. But we are not getting very far because here it's, um, this place that we have to verify our email address. And since we have no way to actually get an email from the box, um, this is nothing we can do. But if you think back to this ticketing system, we do actually have um, sort of an email address. Um, we have this ticket email address. So let's try to use that one. And now we have to verify again, but we refresh that, we can see that we got the email from the MetaMost um, to this ticketing system email address and therefore it will be displayed here in this thread. So let's copy these, uh, this validation link, uh, paste it into our browser. And we can see that this worked. The email is now verified. So let's try to log in. And yep, this looks good. Our account is active. We can join this internal chat. Skip the tutorial. And here we can see some chat. Um, this says us there are credentials to the server. This sounds good. Let's copy this. And also, we're told to stop reusing the same password everywhere. Um, and we get an example password here. So let's use that one. That is basically it for this chat. So let's try to SSH into the box with the credentials we got here. And we can see that this worked and we can read the user flag. Now when looking for root, we just have to remember this hint we got um, earlier here in the chat with um, the password reuse. And let's try to SU to root actually with this password but it doesn't work. And if you look back, it's um, basically telling us that um, we don't, well, we shouldn't reuse variants of this password. So the root password probably is some variation of this one. Now we have to think about how we can uh, mutate this uh, in order to actually get the root password, right? So one way to, to try a list of passwords with SU um, in an automated way is this SU crack program here on GitHub, um, which is basically just using SU with multiple threads um, and you can give it a word list. So it's perfect for our use case. And this call down you bit. There are a few usage instructions. Basically you just give it the amount of worker threads and the word list and it will work. And to install it, we just have to do configure make and make install if you want. So I already cloned that here into this SoCrack folder. And if you execute make and go to the source directory, you will have the actual binary here. 
So let's um, SCP that onto the box. And now we have to think about the word list. So first of all, I created this password.txt, which just um, is a text file containing the password uh, we had in the chat. And now we have to think about how we would um, create our word list. Just to remind myself, I called this cheat sheet here for John. And you can see the syntax here, how to use rules. And there are some built-ins like the single word list extra jumbo and core logic rules. And it's totally fine if you use the jumbo rule. Um, I will use a custom one here because the jumbo one takes a lot of time, but it will work as well. So you can just use that one. And if you want to add a custom rule, you would basically um, open this config file of John, which is an etc John. And all the rules are basically in here. And if you scroll to the very bottom, you can add your own rules. And I added one here, which is very simple. Um, basically with the syntax you tell it, there's a new, new rule. And the last piece here is the name of the rule, in this case, xdt. And the rule basically just appends two numbers to the existing password and the file you give it. And if you're interested in the exact syntax and how to create those rules, um, there are plenty of resources. One I found um, that is pretty interesting is this core logic rules here, um, which has a lot of examples of rules. And they have very um, descriptive names. And like here, prepend hello. And you can see how this is actually done in a rule. So it's a good way to understand the syntax. And there's a lot of um, more complex um, examples here. So the only thing left now is to ex actually um, execute the rule. So let's do that. We want to use our password.txt as a word list. We want to use our custom rule. And then the result should go into wordlist.txt. So let's look at the file it created. And here we can see it's basically just um, exactly what the rule is saying. Uh, we append two numbers and it's doing all possible two number variants here. So let's SCP that as well onto the box. Now let's go to temp here. And here we have the su correct binary and also the word list. So the only thing left to do is um, like we saw in the usage, um, we execute it, we give it the amount of threads, um, let's say 10 here, and we give it a word list. And it found the correct password, which is please subscribe 21. And again, you can also just use the jumbo list, um, but it will take just a, a long time. So let's now actually su to root with the password we just obtained. As you can see, we got root, it worked, and can read the root flag. There's also a note.txt here, which links to a blog post um, describing a similar vulnerability to the help desk one we had in the beginning. Um, so you can see that this actually um, happened in the real world, um, which is a cool way to finish up a box. Thank you for watching and see you next week.